In this video we will discuss on anatomy of spinal nerves. Spinal nerves are part of peripheral nervous system. They consist of motor and sensory fibers. The motor fibers transmit motor signals from central nervous system to the periphery. And sensory fibers transmit sensory signals from the periphery to the central nervous system, through which functions of the trunk and limbs are regulated. Spinal nerves also contain few autonomic fibers. There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves arising from the spinal cord. They exit via the intervertebral foramina from the vertebral canal. The spinal nerves are subdivided into cervical nerves, thoracic nerves, lumbar nerves, sacral nerves, and coccygeal nerves, according to the intervertebral foramina they emerge. There are eight pairs of cervical nerves. 12 pairs of thoracic nerves, 5 pairs of lumbar nerves, 5 pairs of sacral nerves, and 1 pair of coccygeal nerves. The thoracic, lumbar, and coccygeal nerves emerge through the intervertebral foramina below their corresponding vertebra. In case of cervical nerves, this pattern is different. First to seventh cervical nerves exit the vertebral canal above their corresponding vertebra. The eighth cervical nerve emerges below the C7 vertebra. That is, there are eight pairs of cervical nerves, though there are only seven cervical vertebrae. In case of sacrum, there are no intervertebral foramina, as the sacral vertebrae are fused, the sacral spinal nerves emerge via the sacral foramina. Let's discuss the formation of the spinal nerves. Let's draw the cross section of the spinal cord. It has white matter in the periphery, gray matter inside, and a tiny central canal filled with cerebrospinal fluid at its center. Each spinal cord segment has four nerve roots. Two anterior or ventral roots and two posterior or dorsal roots. The ventral root contains efferent motor nerve fibers which carry stimuli from spinal cord to the periphery. The nerve cell bodies of the ventral roots are located in the gray matter of the spinal cord. The ventral roots also contain preganglionic autonomic neurons. The dorsal root contains afferent sensory nerve fibers, which carry sensory information from the periphery to the spinal cord. The cell bodies of the dorsal root are not present in the spinal cord, but they are located in a structure called dorsal root ganglion. These spinal ganglia are intercalated into the dorsal roots. It should be noted that the dorsal roots of the first cervical nerve do not have a spinal ganglion. The dorsal and ventral roots unite to form the spinal nerves. The spinal nerves also communicate with the sympathetic trunk through the Ramai communicantes. It consists of gray Ramai communicantes and white Ramai communicantes. The white Ramai communicantes carry preganglionic nerve fibers from the spinal cord to the paravertebral ganglion of the sympathetic chain. The postganglionic fibers from these sympathetic ganglia enters the spinal nerves through the gray Ramai communicantes. The spinal nerves are mixed nerves, carrying both sensory and motor neurons. So, a typical spinal nerve consists of somatic sensory neuron which carry sensory information from skin, muscle, and joints to the spinal cord. Visceral sensory neuron, which carry sensory information from the organs to the spinal cord via white Ramai communicantes and dorsal root ganglion. Autonomic motor neuron, which supplies the sweat glands, erector pili muscle, and smooth muscle of the blood vessels. It should be noted that the postganglionic autonomic motor neuron that exit the sympathetic ganglia supply the thoracic organs. Somatic motor neuron, which are responsible for motor innervation of the skeletal muscles. The spinal nerve emerges from the spinal column through an opening, 
called intervertebral foramina between adjacent vertebrae. The spinal nerves after the exit from the vertebral canal divides into two branches. Larger anterior or ventral ramus and smaller posterior or dorsal ramus. Generally, the ventral ramus supplies the skin and muscles of anterior part of the trunk and the upper and lower limbs. The dorsal ramus supplies the skin and muscles of the back. Up to L1 or L2 vertebra, the spinal nerve roots has to travel a short distance to exit their corresponding intervertebral foramen. But below to the level of L1 or L2, the spinal nerve roots have to pass a longer distance to exit the vertebral canal. This forms a structure called cauda equina, resembling horse's tail. The reason for this is that, during initial fetal development the spinal cord and vertebral canal are initially of the same length, so that each spinal nerve emerges from the foramen lying at its own level. But as the fetus grows, the vertebral column increases much more than spinal cord, so this uneven growth results in displacement of lower end of the spinal cord upwards, in relation to the surrounding vertebrae. In adults, the lower end of spinal cord lies at the level of T12 or L1 vertebra. So, the spinal nerve roots from L2 to coccygeal spinal cord segments has to travel longer distance to exit the corresponding vertebral canal. The ventral rami of spinal nerves combine to form plexus. There are five main plexus, namely cervical plexus, brachial plexus, lumbar plexus, sacral plexus, and coccygeal plexus. The thoracic ventral rami of spinal nerve does not form plexus, they remain segmental and forms the intercostal nerves. Let's discuss about each plexus in the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, hope the video was useful.